Affinity 3 does not come with a watercolour effect, but you can create a watercolour using the brushes. Now, it's not brilliant for it. It's fine. You can see a sort of watercolour effect here. I'm going to show you how PC or Mac. I was asked for this, so I'm just going to go through it and show you my approach to it. Of course, there's probably many other ways as well. So first thing to do, I've got snapshots, I've got history, and I've got brushes, and also I've got layers. All these various panels, super useful. You can find them in the window menu. There's general. You can see you've got them there. So once you've got that, let's just go back to the original image. And I think it's that one, so let's just bring that back. There it is. With this, what you can then do is you can fill it with white. That sounds odd, I know, but just fill it with white. Make certain the layer is selected. That's a key thing, because unfortunately when you use a snapshot, suddenly it disconnects that over there. So make certain it's selected again. Then go to Pixel, Filters, and then down to Colors, and then there's Fill. Now, I think in my case, I've got white to set for the foreground color. Yes. But you could obviously fill it with white, etc. So once you've got that, you can now apply your brush stroke. But how? What you need to do is go here to the history panel. And the history panel is, I'm gonna go with this one. That's the one that had the image. That's the key thing. So make sure you just select that. And that's in the history panel. Again, I mentioned window panel. Just click there. And now that will be the source for this undo brush. So the undo brush, it's over here. So undo. You've got paint brushes, you've got all these ones, but the undo one is here. So where is it? The undo brush. You never can find it when you want it. There it is. I knew it'd be there somewhere. So undo brush. And you can see now as I hover over there, you can see a bit of the image there because it's using that there. Well, obviously at this point, I need to select a brush. So don't go for any of the ink ones, go for watercolors. And I've gone through quite a few of these and some are quite good, but I think this one's quite a nice one, the light wash. Now, another thing you could do, and something I often do when I'm creating various things, is I just go and get a watercolor some watercolors, actual paints, and just apply them. And then create, obviously, an image from that. And then once you've got that, you can then use that as a brush. You can do, of course, the same with inks, etc. Loads of other things. So you might not want to use these ones. You can create your own. But you can see straight away, just by my applying like that, I've got that already. And I can just go here. And I can tweak this in countless ways. So let's just double click this. This is the light wash one in watercolors. And you can see you can modify the spacing and you can increase, decrease. I think personally, if it's crunched up too much like that, I don't think it looks as good. I think watercolor works better. You're about 14, 15%. So you've got a bit of a, maybe 24. You've got a bit of a gaps there all the time. Also, push the size up a bit. I think the default was 128. I pushed it to 2000. If you've got it at 128, that's just not going to look right. So you've got this, you've got that. Also, you could set the wet edges on, off, whatever. Personally, maybe on in this case is probably better. And let's just close that now. So just a bit of modification. And you can see also I've got this context toolbar and I can now apply it. And I'm going to go with this, multiply. So I think if you just put it into normal, it doesn't look as good. I mean, you can apply it, you can see it, it's okay. But I think when it's multiply, it does, of course, just adds into it. So you can actually, and I'm using an art pad and pen. You could use a mouse, of course. But you can see if you add it and just dab, don't just sort of just, you could, you could just go like that, put a number of times, but I think it's just nicer sometimes just to control around the image. And the great thing, like I say, because you can see in the cursor, you can see the image, you can see the green there, and I can hover over there, you can see the color of the face. You can see, you can just add it around that, because you don't need to apply it to the whole thing. You might just want to apply it little areas like that. And you might then apply it again. And you can see as it's multiply, you get this sort of effect. It's not just sort of all the same. So you can make it stronger in particular places. And then of course, you can just do, again, just do dabs here, there, and everywhere and this is using the undo brush now it's quite possible you could do use this 
effect with other things. Maybe use clone is possible as well. But I think personally, the undo brush is my favorite way of creating sort of any sort of image that sort of looks like a different brush style. And you could use the same approach with ink or anything else. And you can see, now you can go too far. So I'm just gonna stop there. You don't have to, of course you could. Now, at this point, a thing that I quite like to do is duplicate this layer. So you can just go here and there's the layers over here. So layers, you can just right click and you can duplicate. And it's still using exactly the same undo. And you can see apply it again like this. I can apply it like that. And I can apply it different areas, maybe concentrate around there. You might decide, you know, want the obviously the flesh there to be stronger than maybe the white. Or you might want more of the green. All these kind of things. And you can see as you do that, you can create a variety of different things. And of course, you don't have to have it at 2000. You could reduce it down to 1200, maybe make it small. You might certain areas you might want to reduce down even more to so you can see just there you can see what happens it becomes very very small brush but you just want to apply some parts you want to give a bit of structure around the the face there maybe go around the hair and so on and of course you can modify these other settings now i've got the settings here flow at 44 you've got here accumulation at 50 percent all those sort of settings just experiment with them and 100 percent for the opacity and there's also options down here as well. This one is quite interesting one, blend. So you might want to experiment with that, how it blends. Personally, I turn it on. I say multiply is one that I like, but you could try color burn. Just try different ones. That might be just too intense if you don't want that. But unfortunately, there's no sort of feature in Affinity where the brush, you, you apply the watercolor and the brush spreads out. That's something like say Rebel has. That's got it in spades. You can use Rebel to create all kinds of unique ways of the water sort of drips on the page and that sort of stuff. There is no feature for that in this application, Infinity. And you've got ob options there. You've also got symmetry. I'm not going to use symmetry in here, but you've also reset things and you've also got protect alpha. So I've got this layer and the great thing about layer is you can always go over here and you can also go through here, multiply. So you can see, you can do this. So you can run through it and you might think, you know what, that looks a nicer effect. Maybe go with screen, color dodge. And you can see as you change it, you can experiment with all these different options here. Some work better than others, maybe not exclusion. But you can see multiply. But also another thing about this is that, again, this is not particularly a watercolor effect, but you can go to effects. So you can use Bevel and Boston. Of course, this is useful if you're using it with maybe something you want to give some depth to it. Obviously, watercolors generally don't have that. But you can modify the settings here and, and 3D just to add a bit of depth to it there as well. And maybe some of the others as well. But I just wanted to point out that you've got this extra layer which you can work with. And also, of course, you can also move it around, reposition it, all those kind of things. But at this point, I think this is where I'm going to stop for my watercolour effect. And of course, another thing you could do, you could apply some, maybe some blurs to give it a bit like spread out, maybe something like zoom. So you can go to the layer here, just try it, pixel, filters, and go blur, and then maybe zoom. It's probably not going to create the best of effect, but let's just, you could just, Gives it a bit of smearing or maybe box blur, just something like that. Just to give it a sort of like as it's smudging into the into the paper and click apply. But that's because you've got the background. And you can see the sort of watercolour effect that you can create using brushes in Fincy. I hope you found this of interest. If you've got any questions or thoughts, and also please put in the comments below of how you approach this to create watercolours. Are there better ways to create watercolors in Affinity? It'd be great to know. Thank you much. Bye.